So um, I actually talked to a user yesterday in the booth who, uh, who had a perfect use case for this. Uh, he was uh, taking a train trip across Europe from one office to another, and the train trip was like 20 hours long. And he was talking about how much he loved using a DPCS because he had all his code with him. He could do check-ins along the way. And it's sort of like the airplane metaphor that we're all tired of and no one ever, actually ever uses. This guy actually had a real airplane metaphor, except it was a train. And uh, he was using his DPCS all the way there. And uh, as I talked with him, what, uh, what we realized is that with Veracity, you'd have the same thing, except your bug database would be with you too. And you could check your bugs and update your changes. And when you arrive in the other city, you push all your changes. Whether they're true your database, they just all push and uh, result in central server when you get there. So that's a typical, well, perhaps not typical, but it's an ideal use case. OK, so uh, I'm not sure what time it is, but I'm reaching the end of what I want to say. So just a couple things to wrap up, and then I can take any questions if anyone has. Um, I've just written a new book about um, version control that covers subversion, mercurial, git, and veracity. We've got some copies up here. Feel free to just take one. We'd be happy to uh, thank you for coming by uh, sending you away with the book. It does cover some of the pros and cons of choosing these distributed versus decentralized uh, versus centralized tools. Um, obviously, the uh, the author of the book <laughs> has a certain amount of bias towards veracity, but I uh, tried to hide that in the book. In fact, I had 150 external reviewers who helped me make sure that the book is fair, the book is balanced. Gives a fair shake to subversion, it gives a fair shake to material and to give. Uh, and I hope we've achieved our goal in, in uh, reading something that uh, is a balanced uh, treatment of the, of the topic. Uh, a couple of links for you. The Veracity homepage is veracitysm.com. The book homepage is on my blog. And uh, if you don't want a paper copy of the book, the PDF of the book is online. You can also browse the content there as well. All right. So anyway, I'm wrapping up. Uh, happy to take any questions that anyone might have. Yes, sir. I've got to say, the reason why I'm interested is because you don't support uncommit. And so there's, you've got the Q&A section on the website where you're saying, whoa, we've got it like that right now. Future, we might, la, la, la. Please never do. <laughs> OK. Uh, there's a vote for not supporting uncommit. <laughs> Honestly, um, when I think about that sometimes, um, if you've been to the Q&A site, you may have noticed I, I wrote a little thing maybe last week about rebase and how their rebase is actually two operations. There's the construct a new change set that is equivalent to those change sets. I think we might someday support that part of it. And then the other half of rebase is, oh, by the way, since we replaced those change sets, just delete them. I'm not sure we'll do that part. Right, I mean, yeah, if you want to put some branch that's got that's, that's fine, you want to produce a different view, you know, but in fact, it's a different tree. But and the old tree should <coughs> remain. Right. And you make a good point. Um, I mean, this, I this mention is the why I, I'm the first version over Git right now, it's because as far as I'm concerned, uncommit is a basic failing of bizarre material Git. I would, despite how much, how much affection I have for your stance, I would, would reword it and say, those who like uncommit or the ability to modify history in various ways have Git, and I'm happy for both of them. <laughs> I'm happy for them and for you. Um, the materials wire protocol is strictly intentional. Yes, that's true. You can't uncommit once something's been pushed. But Veracity's stance right now is incredibly conservative on the doctrinal issues of changing history. There is no way to do it in Veracity right now. No plans to change that at this time. Yes, so, if a merge has to always succeed, what do you do for cases where there genuinely is um, no coherent way to um, do this automatically? You need someone to come in and say which one of those like, actually have resolved it. You, uh, you have a couple choices. I mean, you must specify an absolute fallback. So uh, the fallback that's available to you um, that's easiest to code is uh, timestamp, despite the fact that, you know, these chain sets all happen on different clocks. You can just say, pick the one with the most recent timestamp, as if all the clocks were the same. You have to do something. However, there's a journaling mechanism. And so you can say, as you do that, change the value of this flag to user must review. Change the value of this field to that. And so you can have it automatically 
uh, flag things that need to be looked at because the, the resolution choices in the template were insufficient and, and it, so it just basically raises it as the need for human attention. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Co-worker of mine. What question yeah, can, do you can, have? No, not a question. Uh, just, just to, in case it's not clear, that that the merge must always succeed rule uh, strictly applies, uh, you know, uh, to uh, you know unconstricted uh, random uh, data. It's it's only going to apply to data that's been reasonably rigorously defined, uh, you know, wh where and how that's going to occur and where those values are going to come from. So that's not something we're, we're doing with source code or, or anything that's just totally open to interpretation. Yes. Uh, centralized versus decentralized. Right now, you know, we're using subversion. We actually operated from SCCS probably about six, seven years ago. Um, what would be and we're, we're kind of an internal shop, you know, we, we just develop software at our place, our customers are at our place, you know, there's no really distributed things that are necessary at this point. What would be, you know, an advantage of going to a distributed database? I mean, it sounds like they're, you know, you've been describing the features of, of RAS and comparing them against the other distributed databases, but I'm not so sure on the advantages of Second generation versus third generation, you know, centralized versus distributed. Um, being unsure of how much time I have, let me say this: I did tailor this talk largely to the difference between Grasping and the other DBCSs. Um, two chapters of my book cover that in fairly great detail. One covers all the things that distributed do does better than centralized, and the other chapter covers all the things that centralized does better than distributed. So I would encourage you to grab a copy or check out the website online. Off the cuff, I would give a couple answers to that. One is that when you switch from almost any centralized system to almost any decentralized system, the performance on the developer's desktop goes crazy. It's usually people don't realize how much faster things like Git, Mercurial, and Veracity are until they try it. Um, now that's not just, like I said, I'm not claiming that this is better for every case, but it's really fast. <laughs> um, there are a couple other you know, things. Uh, if you do any amount of branching and merging, what you will find is that almost any DBCS is better at branching and merging than most of the centralized tools for reasons that I probably shouldn't spend much time on here. Uh, lots of gory details to be shared, but branching and merging works really well in those kinds of tools. Yes, sir. The one thing on your, you know, you've got the performance thing, I think you handicap some version by going to a server which should use a file URL. <laughs> that could be true. He's referring to a part of my book where there's a table I call ridiculously unscientific benchmarks. And uh, I compare an operation done on subversion, git, mercurial, and veracity. Um, and I've had a couple people, I tried to make sure that the comparison was fair. I had a couple people point out that maybe I missed the bullet a little bit. But, um, but the, 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 the Git Mercurial servers were over a network link when you pushed it. Uh, I don't think I included the pushing operation at the point. No, he was doing local. Yeah. Yeah. That was, said, was, Subversion did not have to handicap itself with a web dev like protocol. For but, but, but for local commits, you, I mean, I run local Subversion, I just use a file URL, and there's no server involved. What, what does the rest of your team use? No, 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 it's for personal stuff. And, but, you know, his speed thing was comparing local commits and, quote, local for subversion does not need to involve a server at all. And I'll admit you may have a point there, and I'll also say that if I redid the test with file URLs, Git will still be faster. Not, no, 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 no. Absolutely not, not faster than that. No, I would agree. <laughs> I, I absolutely would agree. Okay. But I'm just saying it's over, vastly overstated, the vastly faster. The difference would not be quite so different. Could be true. Anecdotally, it's still the case, my goodness, that when people switch to DBCS, what's one of the first things developers notice um, is, is speed. Any other questions? What are tie-ins to uh, you know, GUI interfaces like Cordis and other Eclipse? Uh, for veracity or for, for veracity? For veracity? Uh, no. That's probably the shortest answer. We have a, a Tortoise client that is under construction. I 
don't, I think I would be exaggerating if I said it was ready for any use at all. I mean, but I've seen demos of it, but it's in progress. He's making funny faces. It's getting closer. It's, it's closer than I'm saying, but it's not ready. For, it's not what we're, it's not part of the one. I'll say that. But you're playing on those things. Yeah, um, we have no progress yet on Eclipse client or Visual Studio client, but both of them are planned, and uh, both of them will not take too long for us since we have code we can use for other products. So, um, but we will have to make some progress on that. Uh, broadly speaking, I would have to admit, and I say this in the book that. Uh, the state of GUI things for Windows people in the whole DDCS world is is not as rich as, as what some Windows developers are used to. Um, there's some pretty darn good stuff out there, and yet Windows developers are fussy about the about their UIs. Um, I say that with no integration intended, <laughs> and uh, they're accustomed to great user interfaces. And most of the DDCS tools are not really ready to meet those standards yet. Other comments or questions? Thanks for coming. Feel free to follow up with any of those um, methods of communication that seem appropriate to you. And uh, by all means, feel free to take a look if, uh, if you'd like to go. Thank you.